We heard from two former presidents today who used strong words to speak out against division and anger in our politics. President Obama campaigned for the first time since leaving the White House for Democratic candidates for governor today in New Jersey and then tonight in Virginia. At a time when our politics just seems so divided and so angry and so nasty, it, it, it is, is whether, whether we can recapture that spirit, whether we support and embrace somebody who wants to bring people together. Yes, we can. You notice I haven't been commenting a lot on, on politics lately, but here's one thing I know. If you have to win a campaign by dividing people, you're not going to be able to govern them. President Bush spoke out forcefully in New York. His spokesman says Donald Trump was not the intended target, but a source close to Bush acknowledged to our colleague and his old communications director, Nicole Wallace, he was aware of how his remarks would be received and in the current political climate and confirmed that the president drafted the speech himself with the assistance of a couple of trusted aides. Bigotry seems emboldened. Our politics seems more vulnerable to conspiracy theories and outright fabrication. We've seen our discourse degraded by casual cruelty. At times, it can seem like the forces pulling us apart are stronger than the forces binding us together. We've seen nationalism distorted into nativism. We've forgotten the dynamism that immigration has always brought to America. Bullying and prejudice in our public life sets a national tone provides permission for cruelty and bigotry, and compromises the moral education of children. The only way to pass along civic values is to first live up to them. Eugene, talk about the power of our former presidents, the most exclusive club in the world. It, it really is. And what an extraordinary day when you hear yeah. Barack Obama, a liberal Democrat, and George W. Bush, a conservative Republican, speaking as one, yes. uh, giving it uh, but just two common parts, sense. two parts of the same speech. Um, th that really tells us all, I think, what a departure the Trump administration and Trumpism, uh, writ large, really is from the from the American tradition, at least from recent American political tradition going back many decades. This is unlike anything we've seen. This is unlike the normal back and forth between Republican and Democrat, Democratic uh, administrations between liberal and conservative po policies. This is something new and something quite different. Robert Costa, our club of former presidents, as we always call it, the most exclusive in the world. There's no, there's no clubhouse, certainly, but there have been de facto rules, and one of them is you let the new guy, and so far they've all been guys, get their administration started. You, you lay back no matter how fierce your differences. That's another way of saying it took a lot. It takes a lot for these men to speak the way they did today. It does, Brian, and we're also watching in real time the outrage of the political establishment in this country that abides by those norms that we've seen in this country for decades, seeing them unravel in front of their eyes when it comes to foreign policy and domestic policy, not only by President Trump, but by the people around him. And that's why Senator McCain and President George W. Bush are coming out and speaking so viscerally about these norms and what they believe are institutions and values that embody America because Steve Bannon and President Trump and that whole wing of the Republican Party are trying to tear it down. Jeremy, you're the guy who gets to hit with the bases loaded since it's baseball season. You get the tough one. To what end? To what end? I wish that I could say that this would be uh, an awakening for Republicans. I, the, I, there are a lot of Republicans I hear saying that privately, that, but it's not happening. There is no floodgate that's open, Brian, from which Republicans are all of a sudden saying, you know what, we are going to speak out against the conspiracy theory mongering and the, the, the bigotry that we fear has taken over our party. So until they realize, these Republicans, that there is no more political power to be derived from not speaking out against that, they won't do it. And you will be left with 
people like George W. Bush, John McCain, and a handful of others like Bob Corker, who's retiring, you know, people who are, or who are no longer in, in, in politics, no longer standing for re-election, to be the moral voice within the party. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.